what we're going to be going through here is the sum of the year's depreciation method. And we're going to be going through a typical problem here and looking at the mechanics and how we uh, determine our depreciation using this method. So the first thing we have here is let's look at our problem here. We have a purchase here of equipment. We have a purchase cost here of $304,000, service life of eight years, salvage value here of $16,000. That's at the end of the eight years here. And the date of purchase here is going to be on 10-1 or October 1st of year 20. X1. So what we're dealing with here is a partial period here to determine our depreciation and it's really a two-step process here. So the first thing we have to do is we have to determine our depreciation here based on our full year depreciation based on the first day of the fiscal year here because the fiscal year here we're using for this company here is from uh, January 1st through December 1st so this is what we'd have to do here for step one. And what we have is we have to develop our depreciation chart here. We've got our depreciation base that's what we're going to be depreciating here and then uh, we're going to have some remaining life here depreciation fraction we have to develop that here and then from that we can determine our depreciation expense and our book value here at the end of the year. So the first thing let's look at this depreciation base here. Now what that is is the cost less the salvage value. So we add a cost here of 304,000 less the salvage value over here of 16,000 gives us our depreciation base here of $288,000. So the sum of this year's uh, method here requires uh, including uh, subtract out our salvage value here from our initial cost. So, okay, we've got a depreciation base here, $288,000. Now, the next thing we have to do is we have to determine uh, this, let's go and look at it, this depreciation fraction here. And this is what we're going to be multiplying times our depreciation base to determine our depreciation expense. So, what we first have to do is we have to uh, determine the sum of the years here. This is why we call it this uh, sum of the years method here. And that is going to be the total sum of the years here uh, that we have to add up for our total life here. So we start away eight years, seven years, six years, and sum those up here. Our total sum of the years here for our life of depreciation happens to be 36 here, 36 years. Now we can calculate that more easily here just by using this simple um, equation here uh, where n equals our number of years and in this case a number of years here the life, the life here of the asset here and that was eight years so we would take n and the equation here is n times the quantity here, n plus 1 divided by 2. So n number of years, 8 here, times n plus 1 would be 9. So we get a quantity here, 8 times 9 is 72. Divide that by 2, and we're going to come up with 36 uh, years here. So this is uh, going to be our uh, denominator here in our depreciation fraction here, 36. And now this is where our depreciation fraction here that we use to multiply times the base. All we do is we take the remaining life. And this say, say for year one here, we had eight years remaining life. So we take eight years here, divide it by the 36, the sum of the years here. And that fractional amount will take times our depreciation base here of $288,000. And then we're going to get our depreciation expense here at the end of year one here of $64,000. Now just for our book value here at the end of the year. Now we started out with our cost here of $304,000. So we would just subtract our depreci first year's depreciation, $64,000. From the $304,000, we're going to come up with the book value value at the end of year one here of $240,000. Now we'll just continue on in the same fashion for each of the next years here. And just looking again, uh, remaining, let's look at year two here, remaining life here of seven years here. Um, that would be our fractional numerator amount here, seven divided by our total sum of the years here, 36. Take that fractional amount times the depreciation base. You're going to come up with your depreciation expense here at the end of the second year and subtract that here from the beginning book value here. Uh, in this case, it was 240,000 less 56,000 gives us our end of the year here book value here at the end of the year to $184,000. So what we've done here with this sum of the years depreciation method here, what we have is a decreasing depreciation charge. And, and one thing we have to note here at the, in this case, we got our eighth year here and our book value here at the end of eight years is $16,000. So that hasn't been depreciating yet, depreciated yet. That's our salvage value. So this is our salvage value here of $16,000.
All right, that takes care of um, step one here. So let's go down and let's look at what we would do here, to de uh, step two here, to determine our partial period depreciation. Remember this uh, e piece of equipment here was purchased here on 10.1 of 20x1. So what we have to do is we have to uh, prorate our depreciation expense between periods here because what we're going to have here is we're going to be moving here from year one up through year eight. So I'm just going to show here three years here. You get the idea how we... Uh, do our partial period calculation here. So on 10-1, 20-X-1, that would be, there would be three months left here, October, November, and December. Three months here in the year, and a total of 12 months. So our fractional amount that we'd be depreciating here for 20-X-1 is simply 3 divided by 12, or 25%. Now the remainder here of our depreciation would be uh, of the total one year that we're accounting for here. The next uh, would be the nine months that are is remaining uh, in in the next year here because we're we're moving from 10-1 of 20x1 to 10-1 20x2 and so forth. We're always going back here to our October 1st base here. So uh, uh, the next year's amount here would be um, nine. We have nine months here. The difference between three months here used up in 20x1. So nine months here in 20x2 divided by 12 months gives us 75%. So that's our nine months here in 20x2. So what we do here is I just set up a chart here um, for each year, 21, 20x1, 20x2, and 20x3. And this is convenient here when you're trying to determine your uh, total full depreci or depreciation for each year here. So uh, we start with year one here, depreciation here of $64,000. Now remember, that's our full year's depreciation based on the first day of the fiscal year here of January 1st year of each year. And we have to uh, divide this up here based on our 10-1 or October 1st date here. So for 20x1 here, we have 25% uh, or 3 twelfths here of the, of the $64,000. That's plain enough here to see. 25% here is $64,000. Total appreciation for the year gives us $16,000 here, 20x1. Now the remaining here, the next nine months, or 75% of it would go to 20x2 here of the this full this depreciation based on our partial period here. So 75% uh, times the $64,000 depreciation amount here um, gives us uh, again, 75% times 64,000 gives us total amount here of $48,000. All right, so we've taken care of uh, the first full year here of this partial, partial between these partial periods. We divided it up here between 20x1 and 20x2. Now the same pattern here goes for between 20x2 and 20x3 when we're stepping here from October 1st uh, 20x2 to October 1st here, 20x3. So our full year's uh, depreciation here based on our beginning of the year and our first day physical period, uh, fiscal period was 56,000. So again, just taking 25% um, here uh, of the 56,000 here at 20x2 the, uh, gives us $14,000 here. And then for 20x3, they're going to get a charge here for 75% here times $56,000 here gives us $42,000. Now you can see the pattern. We're you can just look at the pattern here, see how we have it laid out here when you're overlapping these uh, partial periods here. Now, looking at year uh, three here, our uh, 48,000 was our full year's depreciation as of January 1st. So 25% um, of it here would go for 20x3. 25% goes times the 48,000 here uh, gives us $12,000. Now we would continue on this pattern all through 20x4, 20x5, and until we get this uh, through all our eight years depreciation. So uh, just looking here on how we would uh, determine our depreciation amounts, well, it's pretty self-evident here. You take 20x1, we were charged here $16,000, so our total amount here for 20x1 would be $16,000. For 20x2, well, you're going to get this $48,000 amount here plus your $14,000 gives your total amount here of 62,000. For 20x3, total you start out with your 42,000 here plus your 12,000 gives you $54,000. So you can see our 
how we divided everything up here for this partial period depreciation and how this little table here is convenient and how you just set it up here when you're doing your problems and if you can't think through it in hand at least this is a good way of laying it out and determining what your depreciation charges are here so again remember this partial period here uh, we had this purchase we started a depreciation here on October 1st here at 20x1 and we had to consider a whole years here so we had some overlapping of the years and we have to determine it we have to divide it up here this whole year based on um, our what we're going to depreciate here in the uh, date of purchase here uh, say for example here we had uh, just say we on June we had six months of depreciation here in 20x1 so then we would just have taken six divided here by instead of three months we would say we had six months here we would divide here six into 12 we would have got up 50 percent here for 20x1 and then the remaining six months here would have been for 20x2 or 50 percent so you can see our example here uh, first we had to determine our full year's depreciation based on our fiscal year here that we had and uh, through that's where we actually use the sum of years digits here so let's just go up and look at that one more time up here and for our sum of years digits uh, just assuming if again this is based on our beginning of the January 1st date here depreciation and you really have to start with this here when you're trying to divide up between uh, those partial periods here so we determine what our depreciation base was that was our cost here less our salvage value that's our depreciation base Base, that's what we're going to depreciate and then we had a remaining life so we started out with eight years and we just work our way on down to one year here and then our depreciation fraction that was simply the remaining life here divided by the sum of the years here and the sum of the years was just the uh, we went through for eight years of life we had to add up eight years plus seven years plus six years on on down here until we gave up the total amount here of 36 years or we could have just used this um, little equation here and just remember that n times n plus 1 divided by 2 here and that gives you the, uh, your denominator here for your depreciation fraction and the numerator is easier to remember that's just your remaining life here and that's and then you would just take that here times your depreciation base and you get your depreciation expense and then from there you can see we had we had to divide it up for our partial periods here between um, whenever we purchased it here during the year what would get charged for the first year and then uh, the remaining uh, amount here would go into the second year based on whatever uh, how we divide up our partial periods